March 31st, 2020, Tuesday. Guys, a ton of stuff going on in the markets today. Opportunity knocks in the door, but you have to realize you have to be extra, extra patient with this type of market that overall is going sideways. The good news, we are hitting this upper part of the trading tunnel, which presents a great opportunity to short this market on the bounce. Buy puts on bounces remains to be this strategy, despite of actually futures pointing to another move higher so far. But the 13 markets move formula, guys, I'm going to show you exactly on the calendar, points to a gap down. So even though I'm recording this, Early in the morning, the market is trading about 26.30 on the futures. I think that by the time all said and done, we could actually be gapping down. Yes, crazy stuff going on. Things look positive and then they shift to negative. Don't be surprised that just the type of market we're in. So the general misconception right now is that we are going into a V-shape recovery. U-shape, V-shape. You hear everybody on TV talking about shapes okay like in the kindergarten okay but the reality there is only one shape and that is the shape of the tunnel which we have shown you dating back to 1987 okay and that's exactly where the market is heading understanding how to trade this tunnel is what's going to help you take your account to the next level so we're going to take a look at a few death cross formations which are crucial because we're observing them in pretty much every sector. Any chart you can pull up right now, it's either going to be a death cross or a death hook formation. Typically, that points to another drop off in the markets. But considering the historic analog, when we lay that over with the market environment that we currently have, analyzing our 13 market moves, the tunnel is your best trade. VIX hit in the buying range, meaning VIX is actually trading on the lower part of the trading tunnel, which creates an opportunity for you to buy VIX calls, which coincides with the upper part of the trading tunnel in the overall markets, which coincides with the opportunity for you to buy puts. Now, we've been trying to figure out what was behind the oil spike. Oil, as predicted, was dropping under 20 and it hit a low of 19.27 yesterday. All of a sudden, uh, in the last hour, oil spikes. So we find out that it was due to a rumor that Trump was calling Moscow, begging for them to decrease their oil production and stop flooding the market so they can get engaged in a phone call to try to sort this oil situation out that's getting entirely out of control. Now, the oil report surfacing that in some parts of here in the United States, Oil is being sold already for as low as four five dollars, guys. So the fact that Trump wants to call Putin on the phone and try to make some kind of deal after he's been damaging the Russian economy with all sorts of sanctions, now he's calling them for a deal. Now he wants a deal after he's basically canceled every freaking deal with them. Um, I don't think that shit's gonna work. So consider more downward spiral in the oil prices. But the market actually did take that as a positive. So far pre-market, we are hearing confirmations that Trump indeed called Moscow to try to work out this oil situation between United States, Russia, and Saudi Arabia. So more development on that is going to be revealed in the next 72 hours. But overall, you want to short any pop in oil. Any bounce in oil is to be shorted because oil is definitely heading lower, possibly 50% lower from where we are. In yesterday's video, we were pointing out oil can easily finish this week at 17. And over the next 30 days, oil could drop to a low of 13. And this is indeed the reason why the markets will resume the downward trend lower now a ton of upgrades at the same time as these rumors are surfacing we're getting a lot of upgrades in the energy sector and the oil sector around 4 5 a.m so who's gonna win wall street or reality this is a war all the analysts are on board on the buy train again at the worst possible time no surprise they were the same analysts that were calling for a much higher price levels in the stock market just 60 days ago. So, mm, not sure if anybody wants to listen to them. Buy puts on intraday bounces, guys, that remains to be the strategy. And some individual stocks, RH, Rita, Twilio, 
AVG, LRC, PXD, SPY, and a bunch of other trades we're going to cover briefly in this video. Um, RH, guys. As we're going through multiple charts in this video, I want you to pay attention to a uh, high resemblance that these charts are reflecting uh, when we are analyzing the blue line and the orange line. They are all pretty much a perfect match of this situation right here, which is the blue line is terribly close to crossing the orange line. Basically, this situation, you should know, if you've taken our courses, known as a death hook formation. Death hook formation is a pre-existing condition to a further developing death cross when the blue line actually does cross the orange line. Now, the, the closer the gap between these two, the sooner the cross will take place. The significance of the cross is the fact that after the cross you can get another move lower in the commodity or the chart that you're analyzing. Uh, of stock, index, or whatever it is that you're looking for, anywhere from 10 to 50%. And in this video, I've actually identified one sector that is so far off reality in relation to the historical conditions that we believe that sector is going to present one of the best opportunities of the course of the ni next 90 to 120 days on the put side. So with that said, RH announcing earnings and we get a negative response. So overall, this situation of a death hook in RH is going to result in a death hook. We can possibly see the stock all the way down in the 70s and 80s level over the course of the next 30 days. Now, for the purpose of day trading this today, guys, day trading and swing trading this, okay, RH, we're suggesting 100 strike or 95 puts at the open. So, so far pre-market, or it announced the earnings last night. Had a strong bounce once, bounce twice, bounce three times. If you were just short at the shears of any one of these bounces, you would have been sitting on some nice profit by now. Um, just thousand shares of this at about 114 would have produced about a profit of about 10 grand. Now, with the options when the market opens, just simply buying 195 strike puts in the calculation that RH can visit low 90s, so maybe 91, 93 level would be an optimal target on RH, but start taking profits when it visits a level closer to the 94.95 level. With that said, the next trade we like for today is RETA, R-E-T-A, RETA Pharmaceuticals. Uh, notice the similarity in the chart, right? Blue line gets terribly close to this. Now, also, I should have mentioned about the RH and all the other charts I'm going to show you here. Notice this. So we've recently set a low in the markets, and we had a strong bounce. Overall, the market's close to 20%. Since then, some of the stocks already given up the gains. Some of them has not done so. So we want to catch this moment with this opportunity while they're in this uptrend formation, clearly uh, facing some major resistance levels. And while in this death hook or death cross formation creates a great opportunity to actually short these bounces. So overall on Rita, all the conditions are met. And we want to buy 150, 140 strike puts at the open or any intraday bounce for that matter. In the expectation of Rita shares reaching a level of uh, 130, 135 over the course of this week. Now, despite of all these rumors of Trump and Putin love affair, Putin in the end to this um, free fall in oil prices. We think this is temporary. It's pointed out also by the one day, one minute chart. This is data from this morning, guys. Uh, the oil bounced twice to a level about 2180. Was up as much as 6%, which is nothing compared to the fact that just yesterday was down 6%. It was down to a low of 1927. This is where the rumor of Trump trying to make some kind of deal with Putin surfaced right here and we had this uh, pretty solid move. Now in relation to where oil prices have traveled over the course of the last 30 days, this is not meaningful at all. So this short term bounces in oil are great shorting opportunities and yesterday's video we pointed out basically you want to short any oil related stocks especially that are heavy leveraged and uh, try to steer away from refineries because those are the only oil associated companies that actually benefit to a certain extent from lower oil prices. If you want to uh, play this using the 
uh, reverse related ETFs, some of the ones we've suggested was SEO, DUG, basically this uh, tickers right here, guys, they will move substantially higher if gold will ultimately break under 20, 19, 18, 17 level at some point this week. So um, overall, we're highly bearish on oil. And uh, despite of these analysts, as you can see, I inserted the snapshot here at about 5 a.m. They were upgrading a bunch of oil-related stocks, energy-related stocks. Now, no surprise, these were the same analysts that 60 days ago were calling for Dow 40,000. So I would use all these upgrades and these oil stocks potentially bouncing today at the open or intraday. I would use this as an opportunity to actually short everything that they are recommending uh, as a buy rating at this point. Now notice there are a couple of things that they recommend as a hold and typically those are the stocks that have dropped substantially already. They trade in the single digits. Some of them don't even have options. So even though they're great candidates to go too close to a zero, okay, or like, you know, nine, eight, ten dollar stocks that could be heading down maybe to a two or three dollars or three dollar stocks that could be heading down to like 50 cents. Um, they may not be a great opportunity from a standpoint of options. From a standpoint of options, we do want to focus on, on, on still buying puts on oil related uh, companies that are still trading in at a higher levels. So that would be a better strategy. Now, guys, welcome to the trade that's going to be prevailing in the markets over the course of the next 30 to 90 days. And that's going to be the tunnel trade, guys. I want you to really focus on these trading levels because they've been rather precise. So to the upside, we could be hitting the level of 2650, 2691. On the downside, 2175. But overall, Focus on the market trading between these levels right here, 2541 and 2350. Now, where we are right now, we're in a little bit of an overshoot situation. And the goal here, guys, is to understand what is the upper part of the trading tunnel and short that, and what is the lower part of the trading tunnel, because that is the area where you want to be collecting profits. So for the purpose of trading today, even though, again, futures at the time I'm recording this are up 18.75 cents on S&P, hitting the level 26.30. Now, no surprise that despite of oil prices moving higher today, which is lately would be considered as a highly positive for the markets, okay, we're running into this major resistance level, which was set last Thursday when the markets were expecting the official approval of this $2.2 trillion stimulus package. Now, this is the same level, and despite of oil making a rather substantial move higher pre-market, the S&P futures are losing their correlation with oil. Typically, would have seen a much higher move in S&P futures, and they're stalling out right around this level of 26. Centers. So at some point today, we will get a drop in S&P. The first level we want to target to collect gains is 2541, guys. So 2541, start collecting some gains. Now, there is a chance over the course of the next couple of days, we will be visiting levels 2503 and 2431. But overall, expect this lower movement within this tunnel right here, unless we do get a complete break lower when it comes to the oil prices. Or we're going to hear some of the other things that is related to some of the companies that deal with mortgage-backed securities completely blown up, which there is a high elevated probability of that actually taking place this week. We just haven't heard about it yet. So understanding this yellow line is where you want to buy puts. Understanding uh, just above the red line is where you want to collect profits. And you can draw actually three red lines here. I just designated them by these red dots. Red dot one, red dot two, red dot three is where your areas for taking profits on actually cashing out on those puts. Now, as far as the game plan for today, guys, it's very simple. We are still expecting the market to open a lower uh, from where they're trading pre-market or even yesterday's close. Uh, so March 31st, we're targeting a move three. Behavior 11, so expect some sort of intraday pyramid to be created, but overall the movement is going to be lower, bounce, lower, bounce, lower, bounce. So analyzing the historic trend after 1987 going 60 days out, you see that the market does not make any substantial breakouts higher or substantial breakouts lower, but rather it is contained within that sideway trend 
identified here uh, by the upper part of the trading tunnel and the lower part of the trading tunnel and all the action pretty much is limited uh, within the movements in that tunnel and the movement is limited basically plus minus seven eight percent to the upside or the downside and this is exactly how we expect the market to trade for some time from here so now levels of resistance are noticed everywhere and notably the formation of death crosses and death hooks are pretty much present on any chart you can pull up right now so next 90 to 120 days stocks will be much lower in certain sectors especially considering the pre-existing conditions which has taken place recently the pre-existing formations of death hooks and death crosses appointed to a overall move lower from current levels we're to take a closer look and one of the strongest stocks, which barely moved after the market has uh, dropped by as much as 35% at one point, Amazon has done substantially better than any other stock, and it bounced substantially higher than a lot of the other stocks, and pretty much is trading within, you know, uh, 100, 200 bucks, uh, basically within 10% of its high, um, and notably on this chart, guys. This big move in Amazon to the to the upside did happen a much lower volume on diminishing volume. That's actually bearish. It is going against this level of uh, roughly 1980. Last time it got to this 1980, the stock dropped. Last time it got to this 1990, it dropped. Uh, guys, there's a major resistance level for Amazon. So anytime it gets closer to the 2000 level, we don't want to buy. We want to short it. We want to short it. So, so far, Amazon has done really well in relation to the rest of the market, but that relationship is not likely to be maintained over the next 120 days. So, we are expecting shares of Amazon to trade lower rather than higher uh, going short-term wise from here. So, the ideal entry would be right here. Now, we're not suggesting that Amazon is the best short quite yet. But it is hitting this level at which an entry is deserved to be considered. Now, some of the other stocks that are definitely going to outperform Amazon to the downside, uh, we're noticing a huge disconnect from reality in the semiconductor sector overall. And what I'm referring to here, the first market fear that was sizable we observed in the upcoming recession, which any upcoming recession is definite negative for the semiconductor sector because they're highly cyclical. So that was actually taking place in December 2018, the crash that we actually predicted with our 13 mark smooth formula. So if we were to compare some pricing on some of the semiconductor stocks that we like to trade, LRCX was trading at the lows of December of 2018 at about 130 bucks. ASML was about 168. Apple, which you know is highly associated with the semiconductor stocks, pretty much a lot of these guys make stuff for Apple. Okay, so it is uh, in a way a leading indicator of what could be taking place with the semiconductor sector. Apple at the time was trading at 150. Actually dropped briefly below 150 was hitting the level of like 140 when we actually recommended to buy Apple calls at that moment. AMD was around $18 a share. So if we're to compare this prices, okay. Now remember, December 2018 drop happened, you know, in to a great extent due to the Federal Reserve actually trying to increase the rates. That was the last rate hike that we did have was in December of 2018. And in fear of slowing economic growth worldwide and Fed actually raising the rates that December, the markets were crashing. Um, now, with that situation, no coronavirus, nothing is going on. Uh, you know, this is the levels where these stocks were trading. Now, in comparison purposes, okay, if we're to move to current times, so this is chart of Apple as of um, last night, March 30th. Right, so Apple is still trading at 254, 255 dollars. Okay, what do you see on this chart? It's the same thing I've shown you on all the other charts so far. Blue line is going lower, orange line is moving uh, right here. So there's a situation of a death hook. Now we're far from actually Apple making a death a death cross. 
so which leaves a substantial room for a further drop. No, no, nobody's talking about it, but Apple could easily revisit December 2018 lows, which would be roughly about 140, 150 bucks, which is about $100 lower from here. Pretty much what we're saying, the stock could still get slashed close to 40, 50% from current trading levels. So next thing to look at, AVGO, guys, AVGO in December 2018 was trading lower than where it's trading right now. Notice on AVGO, right, we already have a def cross that has taken place. So right now it's a great entry to short AVGO in the consideration that the next move in the stock is going to be lower. That doesn't mean it's going to drop today or tomorrow, but overall, if we take a look at the next 30 days, uh, it's going to be trading lower than where it's at right now. LRCX, guys, December 2018, LRCX was trading 130 in the 130s. Okay, look at where it's at right now, 255. So it's a potential 50% drop could take place in this stock. Look at the death hook formation. Look at how all of these charts they pretty much point to the same development. And now the stock is way off the lows of the 180s that we just had not so long ago, right? So now we want to come in, we want to start buying puts. So AMD, guys, AMD. Dev hook is not as pronounced here, but we're at 48 bucks on AMD. We're at 18. This stock could fall substantially low. We definitely see uh, the visuals of a head and shoulder formation here. Uh, ASML, guys, this one was at 168. Now it's at 268. What we're saying is a huge disconnect in the semiconductor industry where now the signs of the economic uh, recession is more vivid than ever. Okay. It's definitely we have a much stronger case for a prolonged recession now, but yet the semiconductor stocks are still trading at a you know hundred percent increase to where they were trading back in December of 2018, telling us that this divergence between reality and the semiconductor sector, based on observing the death hook formations, it's not going to last long. And all of these stocks that I'm showing you here as far as the semiconductor sector, they will be trading lower 90 to 120 days out from here. Now, what is actually causing the gap between the markets and the reality? That's a good question. And it all boils down to the stimulus, right? So we're seeing headlines. There's a huge divergence in the headlines in the market. We've pointed out as more horrible headlines were coming out that it was time to be a bull not so long ago. Now we're turning into a bear again because we think this divergence is not going to last much longer. So this divergence. Spain has the deadliest day, right? If indeed we were heading to a V-shaped recovery, okay, do you think we would also at the same time frame see this type of headline? White House, Congress, wait, next they weigh on next stimulus with the virus spreading. So clearly, if it was a V-shaped recovery, uh, they would not be thinking already about further stimulus when we just barely got the stimulus approved two, three days ago, right? So indeed, the, the, the case for a V-shaped recovery, U-shaped recovery is pretty much non-existent at this moment. And if we're to really, you know, I mean, this is some, some other headlines, right? So UK, a death toll could be 20% higher than what's actually uh, being calculated right now. So while we're getting all these uh, worsening headlines, the market manages to still move higher because apparently Wall Street is, the general consensus on Wall Street right now is that they're calculating V-shape or U-shape recovery. It's not going to happen. Guys, Wall Street is wrong again. They were telling you that the economy is in the best, greatest shape of all times ever, they were telling you the market was going to move to 40,000 on the Dow when we were saying the market was going to crash. In our view, what they're miscalculating again and why they're wrong again, if you look at the history of any substantial downturn where the markets have dropped like 30%, I mean, look at this. This right here is the only column I'm going to talk about in this video, but in the future videos, we're going to break this uh, table a little bit uh, more in detail. What I want you to focus on is the duration of months of the bear market, okay, overall. So if we take the shortest number of months, the, this duration right here in the stable, guys, is in months. So let's say September, December 2018. You should remember that if you were trading, you know, uh, uh, just within the last couple of years, if you're a new trader, if maybe you don't remember some of the 1987s, right? 
but this one lasted three three months okay so far we're in about month and a half you know two months in this current downturn okay now this is the best case scenario but considering the catalyst for this downturn right here which only lasted three months the catalyst and the shock to the economy that we're experiencing right now is way way greater arguably the greatest out of anything on on this table and this table goes all the way back to 1929 1932 where the bear market lasted 34 months then 1937 1942 this bear market lasted 61 months okay 46 to 49 37 months so what makes the wall street think that with the greatest catalyst and shock to the economic system all of a sudden we're going to get a v-shaped recovery is beyond me okay uh but if we look at this simple data okay and considering the catalyst to the current situation okay the economy shut down entirely okay entire shutdown of the economy now none of these instances in the history do we have where the economy was entirely shut now the economy shifted maybe during world war ii okay but even if we don't take the time frame of of world war ii if we take something like uh 1987 where indeed we almost had a v-shaped recovery after going sideways the chart from 1987 i just showed you early in the video right it's four months okay but if you take an average time frame guys the median here is 18 months so I don't think we're going to get 18 months. As stated in yesterday's video, we could be taking four to eight years to recover from this. Nobody wants to acknowledge it yet. Everybody's still hopeful of a V-shaped recovery. So playing the short-term balance like we did uh, makes sense. But overall, you want to focus on shorting the balances for at least next 18 months, guys. Next 18 months all you got to do is learn a simple strategy what it is to short the bounce how do you calculate the tunnels how do you calculate the moves okay and you can continuously grow your account so um, if somehow you're watching this and you haven't taken all the courses guys make sure that you do so you clearly understand all the details you can actually calculate all that stuff on your own so again wall street is miscalculating the amount of time that this bear market is actually going to last we're expecting this bear market to last up to four years now as you know many of the bear markets they have bounces drops bounces drops so taking advantage of the balances and entering your positions at the right moments and understanding when to do so is what's actually going to help you grow your account now there's another problem with identified besides the major problem with oil and that is mortgage-backed security situation fed went and bought a ton of stuff putting a lot of uh mortgage uh, uh related uh, companies in margin calls so margin calls created havoc mortgage lenders reached staggering and unprecedented levels by end of last week so this was just a couple of days ago guys uh, and we've identified a few companies that could actually uh, not necessarily file for bankruptcy but could drop to an extent of 50 to 70 percent as early as this week one of them is a gnc investment we're suggesting 12 strike puts this company could easily drop to a level of eight to possibly five bucks so looking for a drop about 50 to possibly 60 percent on this one uh nly Anley capital management uh five strike puts I know some of them are cheapies, but look at this. This one is just about to make a death cross right here. All of these stocks that I'm showing you guys, they have this one thing in common, this one common characteristic. Look, this blue line about to cross, this orange line, the death hook will be formed here shortly, possibly this week. Okay, NLY. And some of the cheapies, typically a lot of these cheapy stocks, guys, they don't even have options. But luckily, even in this one, which has the highest probability of going to like a zero, it currently trades just under three bucks. I already made the death cross. So shorten this on any bounce, buying like VMC $2 strike puts, or just shorten the stock themselves, right? So for those of you that work with bigger account and you can afford to sit in these positions, like these are easy trades, right? You can just pick up and short some shares. You don't have to worry about option expirations or premium decay. You just sit on these positions. And uh, this, this stocks right here, guys, they have substantial room to the downside from current levels especially if they bounce they represent even a greater entry so now that panic off is off the max 
make sure they have a better opportunity to buy puts at lower premiums. And um, with that said, let's review the market moves real quick. Uh, this sequence right here, guys, 11.767.11.7, gives us a very high probability of a gap down in the markets once we open today on March the 31st. And uh, as uh, pointed out earlier, we're expecting a move three with a behavior of a move 11. Uh, what makes us so confident there is indeed going to be a gap down? If you study the probabilities of this particular month, which combines the current VIX environment with the 13 marks move formula, pretty much any time you've had a move 7, it was followed through the next day uh, with a red move. So 7-3, okay, 7-12, even though 12 is a green move overall in 13 market moves, but it does start out with a gap lower. Okay, so 7-12 would be a situation where the market closes higher, but then the next day it opens lower with a gap down. Uh, seven followed by an overall a negative move. Um, seven is pretty much, if you study, here's another seven followed by a move 311. So we're sort of looking for this type of combination that we had from the 13th going into the 16th. Okay, seven followed by a three. So we're expecting the three today overall. So understanding that, Guys, makes your job really easy, understanding what a move 3 is, what a move 11 is, combining them together for the intraday behavior, targeting your entries, makes your job really easy as a day trader. So March 30th, yesterday, guys, was officially a move 7. This is how it looks on the chart right here. Today's sequence is 11.7. This is how it looks on the chart. And uh, finally, 5-day sequence is 7 6 1, 11. 7, 7, 6, 1, 11, 7, we got a clear double top formation at key resistance level about 26, 30 guys, short this area anytime the market will get here and there's a high probability that it will drop from these levels. This was also pointed out in yesterday's video on this slide, how we're forming this multi-top formation right around the level of 2600 to 2630 area. So with that said, we are expecting VIX to spike substantially high from current levels. VIX is actually working its way lower creating a buying opportunity but it can move higher substantially especially if the oil price is close officially under 20 bucks at some point this week um, now so far pre-market VIX is testing this lower part of the trading tunnel so anytime VIX gets close to this red line you want to buy calls on the VIX anytime it gets closer to the yellow line you want to collect gains and reassess your position if it does break that yellow line, you want to reinitiate the position because it could hit some next levels. But other than that, you want to keep trading VIX until it makes a break to the upside or the downside uh, on in either direction. With that said, guys, uh, we've pointed out in the last couple of days on the VIX so that it is trading in this tunnel, but a major breakout in the VIX could still take place uh, depending exactly what's happening with the oil and some of the other conditions in the markets right now. Overall, you want to position yourself for a smaller breakout in the VIX higher from here. Use the opportunity of what appears to everyone as a stabilizing market to actually time the tops and short them. So buy puts on those bounces. Higher guys, trade like a rock star. I'll see you in the next video soon. Let's trade.